Daniel Murphy, <clears throat> and we're going to demonstrate near balance point rigging on the removal of this 19 inch DB8 oak tree. It's got a fairly large branching structure. Some of these branches are probably 25 feet long, and we have a very limited drop zone. The constraint on this tree, it's got a fairly sizable branches up there. We've got a drop zone right about this big. We have the dogwood tree here, the roses over here, this little crab apple here. Everything's gonna have to come down in the space to be handled and go through that little path there. So I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to demonstrate near balance point rigging. We're gonna tie these branches off very close to their balance point and when they come down, they'll be much easier for the ground guys to handle and get them out of this little landing zone and down that path down towards the chipper. Near balance point rigging refers to tying lowering lines off on limbs out away from the cut towards the balance point of the limb. There are many benefits to near balance point rigging. Number one, you can greatly reduce shock loads, which is extremely important when working with heavier pieces. Number two, it allows the climber greater steering or directional control of the path of the limb as it's being lowered to help avoid obstacles. Number three, it makes the handling of the limb by ground crew much easier. And number four, of course, it provides greater vertical clearance of obstacles. Now, an old school technique for handling situations where you have heavy limbs that you don't want to shock load or situations where you have low clearance over obstacles is to tip tie and butt tie. That would be using two separate lowering lines, one tied at the tips, one tied at the butts in order to lower a piece out. Now this is very effective, however it takes a little longer to set up the two lines. It takes longer to set them up, it takes longer for the ground crew to untie them and get them back to the climber. So near balance point rigging can be used in many situations where tip tying and butt tying was used before, which will save time now another technique that's often used is spider legging. This is used in situations where there's no clearance over obstacles. You can't afford to let either the tip or the butt drop down. Rather than using two separate lines, you can just use the one lowering line and then use what's called a spider leg, a smaller line which is attached to the limb and then tied with a prussic or a taut line up to the lowering line. Both lines are tied off on either side of the center of gravity, preventing the limb from dropping. So whether you're using some of the old school techniques or going for near balance point rigging, it's very important to pay attention and learn about the balance points of the pieces you're working with. Normally on a live green limb, the balance point is two thirds of the way out from the cut to the tips of the limb. Now this first cut is a good example of near balance point rigging. You can see here on the graphic, the lowering line has been tied out a good ways from the cut, not nearly, not quite to the, point, the balance point, but far enough away to allow some counterbalance so that as the tip falls, it's gonna fall more gently. The branch is now laid down into the line and stopped. It's now being held up partially by the line and partially by the hinge. As Soon as I kick it free with, the, with my foot there, you can see the slow, gentle movement of the limb. When using near balance point rigging, it's very important to make sure in most cases that the limb is tied off so that it's tip heavy. You want that tip swinging down and away from the climber. If you're tied off past the balance point and the limb is butt heavy, as soon as the cut's made, those tips are gonna lift up and many times swing right back into the climber's face. It's very dangerous. So tie off near the balance point, but not past the balance point in most cases. So near balance point rigging offers a number of advantages in rigging scenarios. Here you can see I'm tying the limb out again, again a good ways away from the cut. And watch the gentle, slow movement of the limb after separation. This will reduce shock loads which in this case is not, are not that important because we're working with fairly small limbs. But in working with larger pieces, reducing shock loads becomes crucial. The ground men have a much easier time handling the piece when it's tied off near, near the balance point. They could swing the butt around, get it going in the right direction, and just pull it right into the landing zone. 
Now, in order to get, get these limbs tied out a good ways towards the balance point, I obviously have to walk out on the limbs. Having a nice high tie-in point allows me to do that without working too hard. You can see I, the, the angle of my climbing line is not too steep, and it was a fairly easy walk out on this limb. Here's another advantage to near balance point rigging. It allows me to swing that limb sideways away from those lower trees to make sure I, the limb clears and drops right into the open landing zone without damaging any of the adjacent trees. By tying the lowering line out near the balance point, it allows the ground man to pre-tension the lowering line, taking a lot of the weight from the limb and putting it on the lowering line. This allows me to cut a hinge that will steer the, the limb sideways. Normally the hinge would break before this limb would be able to be steered sideways because of the weight of the limb. But since the weight of the limb is now on the lowering line, you can see this notch is gonna work perfectly and steer this big limb right around and away from the adjacent tree. Pretensioning the lowering line is easily achieved by sweating in the line as shown here. By combining a pretensioned lowering line with a near balance point tie off and a notch that's angled slightly to the side of the lean, natural lean of the branch, the climber can allow the ground man to completely control the lowering of the limb. Let her down, dude. It's all yours. Okay, let's take another look at that same cut in half speed. What I do is uh, the line has been pre-tensioned and I've now cut the notch in the back cut and the piece begins to move but it won't move because of the pre-tensioned lowering line that's been tied out near the balance point. I then yell down to the ground man, I shut this off, yell down to the ground man, okay, it's all yours. He then gently lets the rope out and the piece moves down in a very controlled fashion. So by the time it separates from the cut, all the weight of the limb has transferred onto the rope and there's no shock loading whatsoever. Understanding the physics of falling objects to reduce shock loads is very important. When you're lowering heavy pieces, shock loads can build up tremendous force, potentially causing the failure of the rigging system or the tree. Don Blair's formula for calculating shock loads is take the weight of the piece times two plus the distance fallen in feet times the weight of the piece. So for example, if you have a 700 pound piece that falls eight feet, you're gonna generate two times 700, which is 1400, plus eight times 700, which is 5600. You'd be generating 7,000 pounds. That's a lot of force built up in only eight feet of fall. Safe working loads of rigging lines are generally considered to be between 10 and 20% of tensile strength, depending on who you're talking to. So a 7,000 pound line has a safe working load of between 700 and 1,400 pounds. Now, if you're working with heavy pieces, it, it becomes very clear how important it is to control shock loads to keep yourself within that safe working load of the lines you're working on, as well as not to overload the tree because should the tree fail, that can often result in the death of the climber. So there's several ways you can go about reducing shock loading. Number one, use dynamic rigging lines. These are rigging lines that have stretch in them. Typically your double braid lines do not have a lot of stretch. Number two, you can have a skillful person running the ropes to have very controlled deceleration, letting the pieces run. That will also reduce shock loads. And number three, and the focus of this video presentation, is to use near balance point rigging, which is an advanced lowering technique that requires careful coordination between the ground person and the climber. The climber and the ground person determine the proper number of wraps to take on the lowering device based on the weight of the piece being lowered and the friction in the system. In general, one wrap is fine for lighter pieces, 
a wrap and a half or two wraps for medium and heavier pieces and three wraps is reserved for only the heaviest pieces or pieces that you don't want to run at all. Using an overhead rigging block keeps the friction constant in your rigging system and reduces wear on the ropes. That's good because it helps take the guesswork out of how many wraps need to be taken for a given weighted piece. Also keep bear in mind that using natural crotch rigging actually reduces the force that's put on the tree. So if you have any questions at all about the structural integrity of the tree, it's often better to go with natural crotch rigging to reduce the force on the tree. In this diagram, the system on the right represents the lowering line being run through an, a, a rigging block. So there's because there's nearly no friction on the pulley on the rigging block, if you're holding 500 pounds on the right leg, you need to balance that out by holding 500 pounds on the left leg, creating a thousand pounds on the sling or therefore the tree that the sling's hanging from. And the system on the left here where we're doing natural crotch rigging, you're hanging the same 500 pounds on the right leg, but the force on the left leg is going to be less than 500 pounds. It's going to be 500 pounds minus the friction in the natural crotch, which can be significant. So the overall force put on the tree and the system on the left is going to be less than a thousand pounds. Near balance point rigging is an advanced rigging technique which is extremely useful and effective in reducing shock loads. This can be a big time saver when you're taking down big trees. However, it does require good coordination between the climber and the ground person who's running the ropes. In a tie-off position where the limb is tied off just beyond the climber's cut. As soon as that limb breaks free, the tips are going to drop straight down and create a lot of movement and a lot of shock load on the system. In a near balance point tie-off, you can see that there's going to be a lot more movement on the line as the limb begins to drop. When it's butt hitched, there's a very short movement in the line before their separation. When the line is tied out further, as the limb begins to drop down, the weight of that limb starts getting transferred onto the line because the line has to move far farther. So that at the, by the time the limb separates, most or sometimes even all of the weight of the limb is going to be transferred onto the line which is going to reduce shock loads very effectively. Now this shot is a perfect example of how shock loads are reduced during near balance point rigging. However, you must be aware that that limb, when it's falling straight away from the overhead anchor point, is going to act like a giant lever. As long as the hinge is intact, the end of that limb is going to create a force multiplier on the lowering line acting again like a giant lever pulling down on the line. Now let's watch that again as that limb again acts like a giant lever pulling down on the line. The one thing to be aware of as long as the ground man can let the, the piece run, there's, he's going to be able to mitigate that effect of that force multiplier. But in situations where you have an extremely heavy piece or you can't allow the, the piece to run, that force multiplier is going to create a lot of extra force on that line and could be a problem on big pieces. In a near balance point tie off, after separation, the weight of the butt is going to tend to counterbalance the weight of the tips, creating a slow motion, a slow movement, seesaw like motion, or a slow rotation to the new point of balance. This will prevent the tips from dropping rapidly, which creates shock loads. Here's a 30 foot tulip lead falling gently into the rigging. And even with wood, you can tie it up near the balance point and see how gracefully it falls. Now here's a large oak lead that's being rigged down. Let's take a look again in slow motion. The, the line is tied out away from the climber. As it begins to move, you can see that the ground man is letting the tips down so that the whole limb comes down and away from the climber. And you can see that it's tied out far enough so that the butt can counterbalance the weight of the tips creating very slow, steady movement down and away from the climber, reducing shock loads.
The climber and the ground men must have good coordination to ensure that the number of wraps is sufficient to allow control of the piece, yet not so many wraps that the ground person is unable to let the piece run when needed. This comes with experience. Another cutting technique that's very useful in many situations with to use with near balance point rigging is the shoulder cut. Here, the, there's no undercut, there's no notch, there's just the top cut straight through. And you can see that the piece is slowly ripping down onto the rigging there, onto the lowering line, still attached to the tree until the final cut is made and then it drops. Now, of course, this technique is gonna be only used for removals as pruning is to be made with a proper target cut. The thing about this is when you cut into the shoulder of the trunk like that, the fibers there will tend to keep that limb from splitting. Heavy limbs, if you just make a top cut with no undercut out of ways, are going to split and possibly pinch the saw or cause other problems. By using this cut closer into the shoulder, it'll keep the fibers intact and it'll gently rip away. Now this cut is another example of directional control, the benefit of directional control that your balance point rigging provides. You can see there I am making a, a nice open face notch and that's going to be to the side of the, dire the direction of lean of the limb and then with the near balance point rigging it controls the piece. However, notice the lever effect again. Even though no, there's no shock load involved there, there definitely was a force multiplier as that piece was still swinging down and away on the hinge. Now here again you can see how having a, a nice high tie-in point and using advanced climbing hitch and climbing gear allows me to get easily out to the tie-in point for the near balance point rigging. This technique is called side notching. By using a side notch where the notch is pointed directly to the side, I can get that limb to swing 90 degrees before it drops at all. So the tip, tips haven't dropped at all, it's starting to move and then finally after it moves a good ways away it finally is going to drop. That's a nice technique it's not needed that often but when you need it it comes in really handy. Well, well I hope that gives you a good understanding of near balance point rigging. Try this in non-critical situations till you get familiar with the technique and how this wood is going to respond and the forces involved before you take it into cr critical situations. It comes in very handy when you need it. You have to know what you're doing or you're going to get in trouble though. Good luck and climb safely. Thanks very much for watching. This is Daniel Murphy. Hope you catch another video sometime soon.